So today we're gonna to talk about the DNA of an entrepreneur and what it takes to truly be successful, not only in real estate wholesaling, but in business. And so today what I would like to do is sit across from you uh, in front of the fire and we're both sitting in just comfortable leather chairs, kind of having two friends, having a conversation. If I look back on what makes people successful versus unsuccessful, it's how they look at uh, how they look at opportunities, how they look at themselves and how they act on it. So before I jump into today's episode, if you have not been over to nextlevelwholesaling.com, you gotta check it out. If you've been in business for any length of time, or even if you're brand new, and you wanna get a gauge of where your wholesaling business is compared to where you would like to be, I've got a free tool uh, there for you. It's called the Next Level Wholesaling Assessment. Go there, take it. It's a quick quiz that, that will rate you in the four core areas of your business, and that is uh, acquisition, or excuse me, marketing, acquisition, disposition, and accounting, okay? And accounting is basically your profit, which is the money that you take home, which may sound like the most boring part of the, mo of the four, but actually is the most important part. How much money are you drawing out of that business to fuel your long-term wealth building plan? So go to nextlevelwholesaling.com, take the free assessment, and uh, you'll know the very next step that you need to take to grow that business to the next level. All right, so let's talk about this entrepreneur's DNA. So one of my mentors, Dan Sullivan, said the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who takes something from a lower level of utilization to a higher level of utilization. And so you want to look at opportunities that way and say, hey, how can I take something that's being used in an, an inefficient way and now, you know, now make it more efficient? Right. So, for example, let's take a look, uh, and, and I'll, I'll bring this back to wholesaling here because this is a hopefully a podcast of people who want to invest in real estate and make big fat checks, juicy checks, wholesaling houses. But sometimes when I use a different industry or a um, different example, it helps kind of break some self limiting beliefs there. Right. So pretend like uh, I'm a kid and I have a bunch of boogie boards sitting in my garage. Right. Or uh, let's pretend it's uh, that I'm a 50 year old guy. Okay. And all my kids are out of the house and I've got 15 boogie boards sitting in my garage, right? Well, you would say that since if I was 50 and my kids are grown out of the house, which they're not, <laughs> but I had 15 boogie boards sitting in my garage. You could say that the boogie boards sitting there or surfboards or whatever you want to call them are at a low level of utilization, right? They're not being used to their full capacity. So let's pretend like there's a neighborhood kid in uh, who, who's in the neighborhood, and now my kids are all grown up and out of the house, and he's driving around, and he happens to see my 15 boogie boards sitting in my garage. Now, this little entrepreneur says, you know what? I'm going to take these from a lower level of utilization to a higher level of utilization. He approaches me and says, Todd or Mark, or whatever it is, Todd, can I take these boogie boards out of your garage, uh, all 15 of them, and how about I don't pay you anything up front for them, but uh, I'll, uh, I want you to store them here at night for me, uh, but I wanna take them down to the beach every day, and I want the, to rent these out to boogie boarders uh, every day for $15 a piece. And so I'll come here, I'll, I'll open the garage, I'll take the boogie boards out, I will rent them out during the day, and then bring them back here at night and I will split the profit with you 50-50. And that is, my friends, is how an entrepreneur takes something from a lower level of utilization to a higher level of utilization. It doesn't require money. It doesn't require uh, business experience, right? But what it takes is the ability to see something that is not being used in an efficient manner, okay? To something that uh, can be. Right, and so that is the very heart of entrepreneurship, okay? So let's bring that into real estate wholesaling for a moment, right? You have a seller who would like to sell their house fast, right? They want a fast, easy, convenient sale. They'd like that money today, right? And then you have the market, which is the, the typical traditional real estate agent who wants to list the house on the market, let everybody in. The seller is going, or the agent's going to ask the seller to fix the property up and go through an arduous listing uh, process on a 30-page agreement, which they don't understand, and then wait for a buyer along 
long drawn out closing and then get their money like, you know, 60, 90, six months later, right? And so there's a gap there between what a seller wants, the fast, easy sale, money today, and what the traditional market is offering, right? So the entrepreneur, okay, the real estate entrepreneur sees that market inefficiency and says, okay, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to solve this gap. I'm going to approach this 50-year-old man with 15 boogie boards coming into uh, 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 15 boogie boards sitting in his garage, right? <laughs> and now I'm going to partner with that seller and move the boogie boards every single day and split the profit. And that's exactly what you do when you are talking to a motivated seller. Okay, so that's my first point. You got to change your mind, change your viewpoint on what you do because you're finding underutilized resources and taking them to a higher level of utilization. And that, my friend, an example with a seller, that is the motivation of the seller and the speed in which they want their money, right? There's a gap there, a market inefficiency in which you as a real estate wholesaler can now solve that gap. Step two. The second part of the DNA is we don't ask if something can be done. You ask, how can it be done? I can't tell you how many times in my business career where I've asked a vendor or a contractor or an employee, uh, you know, if something could be done. And the first answer out of that mouth, or this could even be a team member, is no, right? Whereas if you just change your thinking and saying, hey, you know what? Uh, if I wanted to do this, how can it be done, right? And all of a sudden, the person sitting across from you, all of a sudden, a light switch would will, will turn on, right? And so every single day, you are going to hear that you can't do things in your business, okay? You're going to hear that, you know, you can't wholesale. You can't buy a house 70 cents on the dollar uh, or 60 cents on the dollar or 40 cents on the dollar. Uh, you can't make a couple million dollars a year Wholesaling, uh, you're going to hear, you know, that uh, you can't put a house uh, on the MLS legally without owning it, right? Whereas if you just switch and say, you know what, if I wanted to, how could I do that, right? And and, and immediately the light bulb's going to go on. So, for example, yeah, typically if you try to buy a house on the market from somebody and try to get it sixty cents in the dollar, guess what? Most people are going to say no. But if you ask the question how, well, if you send out marketing consistently every single day and invest your money uh, every week for six weeks, a portion of those, a small portion of those, which is all you need, you only need one, okay, is going to be motivated. Motivated enough to sell to you 50 to 60 cents on the dollar so you could make 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a deal. Okay, but you got to ask how, 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 how. If someone says, Todd, um, can I make $50,000 a deal in my market, in my Midwest market? Well, my the initial reaction might be no. If someone came to me and said, Todd, how can I make $50,000 on a deal in my Midwest market? I'd say you'd have to buy houses that are going to sell for 60 thousand dollars for ten thousand dollars all right so you always have to ask how not if because the world will tell you and your friends and your family and your acquaintances and everybody else with their own baggage why you can't do something and so you got to change the question that being said, okay, I'm going to talk about the entrepreneur's mindset, and I didn't put this in my bullet points here before I prepared. Every single day, people are trying to crush your entrepreneur's mindset because they don't have that mindset. And so if you're the outlier and you start talking this way, you're going to get their baggage, right? And so be careful on who okay, you're talking to about your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, right? Talk to people who will say yes, who will give you the answer that you want to hear. Okay, step number three, a uh, sense of urgency, okay? A sense of urgency. So a lot of us have plans. Very few people act on them, okay? So 
for example, if I'm talking about, hey, you should maybe try direct mail, okay? And you're like, yeah, I might want to get on that. Well, the people who I've seen who are really successful and say, hey, you know what? I want to do direct mail. They'll say, Todd, tell me what to do. Okay, well, step one I'd say is, number one is grab a calendar, right? Uh, a, a, a Google spreadsheet or a marketing calendar. And uh, number one, just label it one through 52, right? A week for every 52 weeks of the year. And put all the lists that you want to mail for the next 52. Actually, I'll make it even easier. Just do it one through 12, right? For the, the quarter. So one through 12. And you're going to put the list that you are going to mail every single week on that calendar, the Google spreadsheet, okay? I, you know, personally, I try to mail everyone uh, once every six weeks. You could do four weeks. You could do eight weeks. There's, this isn't exact, right? The people who get stuck are like, well, is it every four? Is it every six? Is it every six or every eight? Right? They're not going to get stuck too much on those details, right? They're going to say, Todd, this is my budget. What do I have? What should I do? They're going to call the postcard company. Uh, they're going to get the postcard that they should use. They're not going to agonize it uh, over over six months. They're going to find out and get some suggestions from a mentor, right, on which one to use. They're not going to question it. They're not going to pick it apart. They're not going to ask all their friends and family their opinions because they don't matter if they're not wholesaling experts. And they're going to send it out, like, tomorrow. <laughs> and that's the difference between people who are successful to those who just want to think about it. Speed of implementation is one of the most important things in business. Why? Well, someone's like, oh, well, I don't want to make a mistake. Things change in business so fast, right? That if let's just say you were agonizing over a decision and you wanted to find out every conceivable outcome, by the time that you could possibly do that, your original question is probably different. Right, if you're agonizing on which mailing list to, to use, uh, by the way, these things do change, or the mail, which, which 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 postcard is working right now, right? You want to spend a day or two figuring that out. You don't want to spend six months doing that because that may change by the time you start thinking about it, right? So you must move right now. Sense of urgency. If, uh, and let me give you an example. Okay, so in our team, actually, we have uh, return postcards that go back to our virtual mailbox, right? And our team is talking about, is it worth uh, skip tracing, right, and automating a process um, basically in batches, okay, in a group? So you could take all of your return postcards, you could put them all on an Excel spreadsheet, right, and you could send them to a company to batch Okay, skip trace those leads, right? Then call them and then mail them again because let's say the addresses or phone numbers were wrong, okay? And so we were talking about a process to automate that or if we were to work with the companies and pull them one by one from the service and if that would be more accurate. Okay, now what I just said necessarily isn't that important, but we were trying to make two decisions and how we would automate that if the one-on-one -on -one skip tracing was more accurate. And the team is going on and we're talking about this for 15 or 20 minutes. And then somebody on our team says, hey, you know what? Why don't I just skip trace 10 by hand and actually see if we're getting a better result? And if we get a better result, then we'll look on how to automate that. Boom, the light bulb went off. This, we, we, the, the, someone on our team's hand skip traced these, got the owner's information from the return postcard, called them, okay, and now is reporting back on Monday on what those results are. But you see how the speed there, we could have spent three months trying to automate some weird process when we didn't even know if it was going to work or not. So the speed of implementation is going in there, making happen, testing it, seeing the result, and then worrying about, okay, we're going to automate this and make sure that there's no human processes. <laughs> the key is speed. And when you find something that works, do it again and then do it again. And after it works a second or a third time, then automate the sucker. All right? Speed, speed, speed. Speed kills in a very good way. Okay, number four is entrepreneurs mean, uh, when they hear no, that just means not yet. Every day of the week, you're gonna hear why something won't work, okay? This goes back to 
if, uh, how can I do something instead of if, right? No, I won't take your price, right? No, I won't list your properties um, for 1% on the MLS. Maybe a real estate might agent say that, right? Um, uh, no, you don't find the employee that you wanted to on the first round. You're going to hear no all the time. When I hear no, the only thing I hear is wah, 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 like in the old Snoopy episodes. You have to learn to have a Teflon shell. Things got to just slide off of you. You got to understand that that the majority of the time you're going to hear no. But when you hear yes, you win, right? That's how entrepreneurs think. They find the opportunities that other people don't find because other people don't have the belief the fortitude, the excitement, the drive, the hunger to proceed past that first no. And most people won't even make it past no. Like you have no competition, right? The first no, someone says, oh, I guess this doesn't work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how low the threshold of competition is because most people are gonna walk away at uh, the first sign of no. All right, so uh, let's talk about number five. And I know that I uh, said this was just kind of a fireside chat. I was going to sit here in my leather chair in front of the fire, and I am uh, firing up myself here again. My tone is is equaling my other episodes all of a sudden. And uh, but let's talk about the long term approach. So most employees or W twos, what they're focused on is P R N. PRN. PRN is a deadly sin. What does that stand for? It stands for paycheck right now. Paycheck stands for security. It means job. It means, quote unquote, your belief in certainty. And you're going to have to let that go. So most people are focused on PRN. And sometimes in their business, they also look at that. And you got to switch that to ROI. Okay. PRN from ROI, paycheck right now to return on investment. Investment of your time, investment of your resources, investment of your money. So if you've got $5,000 in the bank, uh, and if you don't, find it. Okay, there's a million ways that you can do it. Uh, if you don't have $10,000 in the bank, find it. You can do it quickly, even if it's not through wholesaling. I don't care. Drive an Uber, give blood, plasma, whatever else you want to do. Get a second job. Borrow it, partner. There's no such thing as lack of resources. How can you get a return on that money as fast as humanly possible and consistently? So when you spend $10,000, you're not focused on your paycheck right now. You're thinking, how can I turn that $10,000 into $50,000? How can I invest an hour right now so that I could hire and train an employee so that I could get 10 to 20 hours back every single month? Oh man, that sounds so sexy. <laughs> How can I get this money working in a long-term vehicle that's going to pay me for the rest of my life passively with some work up front without getting paid anything? So here's an example. Right now, uh, I just bought a really good deal on a mobile home park, and it is a mess. This is probably the biggest real estate project I've ever um, done. And uh, I'm working on it, and I'm not gonna make any money on this thing probably for four to five months. And guess what? That's scary. It's uncomfortable. I don't necessarily like it. I write a check every single month to, to feed this beast. Uh, but around month five or six, I'm gonna start to see that first paycheck come in. Month Seven, eight, nine, it's going to be a little bigger. Month 13 and 14, it's going to be a litter. But around month 16, I suspect that I will net $15,000 a month from this one piece of real estate. And so if I wanted a paycheck right now, there's no way that I would get this piece that's going to feed me every single month. And so you need to change your long term approach to ROI and get rid of P. R N. I'm okay with PRM, paycheck right now, as long, as long as it means to get to ROI as fast as humanly possible. 
All right. Now, the last one. Understand what got you here won't get you there. So in business, you are going to have to constantly evolve, right? If you were listening to this podcast and you're trying to do your first deal, it may be that you are going to have to uh, get on the phone and cold call or work at night, get Ubers to send out that first marketing campaign. You're the one talking to sellers. You're talking to the buyers. You're talking to the lawyers, the title companies, escrow companies, whatever that is, right? And you're doing all the work. You're in your email, handling the administrative work, all of that. And that will get you to your first hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. Then you're going to probably have to hire a virtual assistant. Okay. By the way, download the next level wholesaling assessment, by the way. Okay. Uh, you may understand that you probably now will need to increase your sales skills, right? If you have not purchased the no limit selling system, uh, go purchase it now. Okay. No limit sales system.com. You got to learn how to talk to motivated sellers. So that alone might get you to a half a million dollars in sales. If it's just you, well, then you're going to realize you can't follow up on all these leads yourself. Right, so now you're going to have to hire a lead manager. So between a VA and a lead manager, guess what? You might beat a million bucks. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, you know what? You might decide I want to buy back my time. Okay. Uh, to, so to get to get to a million bucks with four or five uh, with with just a VA and a lead manager, it's going to require forty to fifty hours of work a week. Um, but. If you want to do a couple million and work 20 hours, 10 to 20 hours, you're going to have to hire an acquisition specialist, right? And so there's always new levels. If you want to take your wholesaling business past that, you're going to have to eventually hire a sales manager. And so really, really, really step up and to grow. So understand that you have to constantly be evolving on what you do and what you're willing to do. Okay, so that is my conversation with you today about the entrepreneur's DNA. All right. Understand that you take things like boogie boards, like houses from a lower level of utilization to a higher level of utilization. You don't ask if you can do something. You ask how you can do something. Got to have a sense of urgency. Take action. Don't be trying to build Rome if you haven't even proved a concept yet. Understand that no just means not yet. You want to take a long-term approach. You want to get away from PRN, which is paycheck right now to ROI, and you understand what got you here won't get you there, okay? I got a couple of reminders for you, by the way. Download that assessment over at nextlevelwholesaling.com. Uh, you also, uh, if you want to catch up with me in one of my favorite Facebook groups, go to wholesalingincgroup.com. Catch me at Todd Toback. i uh, love to hook up with you there and make sure to download that assessment at nextlevelwholesaling.com, and I will see you on the next episode.